Hi everyone, it's Sherry with Blessed Bobbles, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. We're continuing to unbox our rich box and poor box. So here's our little tabbies, and I'll put the tab next to whichever lot I'm working on at the time. I will grab some jewelry out of the rich box first, just like we did last time, and then we'll look at some from the poor box, and we'll see what we think. I do still have my paper towels down because when you're unboxing, you know, you don't want to mess up your nice linen, so forgive me for that. And here is how you can purchase. If there's any pieces I happen to price during the video, this is how you would contact me to buy any of them, or actually from any of my videos. You would need to email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com. And please, please add these four pieces of information, and I'll be able to let you know if I still have that item, okay? So I'll need the video name and the episode number, the timestamps of when your pieces show, and if you don't know how to get the timestamps, you just push the pause button on whatever device you're on, the timestamp will be on your left, and the total time of the video will be on the right. So that's your timestamp. And then a brief description of the item that you want and the price that I gave, if I did give one. And I always say thank you so much. You won't lose any time if I have this info. And I won't lose any broken heart with you missing the ability to buy something because there's missing info or someone else grabbed it up, okay? So thanks so much for that. Also, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you as a sub, 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 sub. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And if you click that bell, you will be notified when my next video comes out. I have noticed lately on YouTube that when I subscribe to a new channel and I see the bell and I click on it, it's not always checked off. There's like a little drop down menu that comes down. Look how much technology I know I'm showing you with a piece of paper. <laughs> But you click on the bell, there's this little drop down menu, and it will say, Do you want to be notified for all videos, some videos? I'm not sure what it exactly says, but you have to click that box, all, and then you'll be notified of my videos. So just wanted to let you know that I noticed that change lately, and you might want to go back and make sure that that's clicked on your subscription to me, okay? Thanks for letting me take a minute for that. I'm all flabbergasted because when I paused the video in between saying hello until now, Bolty jumped right on the table. I wish I still had it recording because he's enormous. He's about this big, like out of camera, my hands will go. So he just did that and freaked me out because I already got all the fuzzies off the table and tried to get it to look nice. All right, let's get into Rich Box Poor Box. Um, before I do, those of you that are new to me, you won't notice this at all, but those that follow me, you'll notice that I had no video on Friday, no video on Saturday, and not even one on Sunday, and I have missed you all so, so much. I do apologize for that. I am just fine. We had some happy, happy birthdays this weekend, and my heart was absolutely full spending time with my sons and celebrating one of their birthdays. And I made my son a cake, which I will get into in another video. I used to make cakes professionally, and not so much the cakes themselves, but the icing that I make is always um, very well received, and my kids absolutely love it. So my son was very surprised and happy that I made him a cake with mom's icing. They all loved it very much. So that was a great time and I was very grateful to do all that. And maybe next time when I have more time, I'll show you some of the pictures of the cakes that I used to make. Um, long before there was a Cake Boss or any of those shows, I used to make three dimensional birthday cakes for people and they were pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. So. Maybe I'll share that with you a little bit as well. I have the wrong sticker up here. Okay. Now, the last time on our first episode, episode one, out of Rich Box came this piece. It is all cobalt blue, hand-blown glass with this gold threading in between. 
I still do not know what it is. Some had suggested that um, a famous designer may have designed it. I'm trying to think of her name. She just passed away. God bless her. Uh, but I did get to look into her life a little, which was exciting. And I can't, I can't figure out if this is one of her pieces. There's no marking anywhere. It is all blown glass. It is quite heavy, and it's beautiful. There are several, or not several, there are some listed on eBay. And only one man, just one, talks about it being a table, piece of table jewelry. Just one. I'm not sure about that. I did write to him and ask him what his source was. He said that he bought a lot of cobalt blue glass off of a lady that had a shop in Saudi Arabia. And this was one of the pieces he bought from her. That's all he knew. So not sure about that as well. I'm thinking, and some others have suggested, maybe it's a prayer bead piece that would go on the table while everyone prayed together. I have no idea. I just know it is beautiful. There's a lot of hand-blown glass. Um, you could use it for whatever your heart's desire is. And it's stunning. I measured it last time. It's 28 inches, almost 30 inches long. And I'm just going to give a price because I've done my best on my research. And I will say 35 for this piece. Just remember, it's got some weight to it, so it's going to have to go in a little box and be shipped to you. So 35 on that. Yep, this is rich box research that I did. This necklace is quite beautiful and turns out to be a horn bead necklace. I did look this up and didn't get quite far either. Let me see what my notes are on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Buffalo horn. Anthropology had one that looked very much like it. However, there was only one listing that called it anthropology. So I cannot go by just one listing and call it an anthropology necklace. I didn't see more than one listing, but it is buffalo horn. There are some very similar from designer Hermes or Hermes. So again, not sure, can't really be sure about it, but I will give it a price and see who would like to pick this one up. This is, again, 28 inches long, and then we've got another few inches for that lovely pendant on the bottom. There is some black enamel here, or maybe black horn, I don't know. There's just a different color there. Gold paint is here, gold enamel here. It's very beautiful, quite a statement piece, and I will say 45 on that one. So that one's all done, which is exciting. And the other Givenchy piece, I researched this one that we found in our episode one. It's on a lovely dark metal chain. It is signed here. It is a real Givenchy piece with beautiful pink crystals and marked again on the back. And these sell kind of all over the place, probably around $45. So for my subscribers, I will say $20 on this. It's in perfect shape. It is Givenchy and it is about 18 inches long. So there's your price on that piece. The last one I researched was this beautiful type necklace it is missing one tiny stone and you know when we're so up close on the camera we see every little tiny thing which is wonderful I love that but when you're wearing it I don't think anybody would see that unless they've come up to you with a loop in their hand and they're like hey can I see that necklace so let me see which one is missing so I can show it to you so you will know. See how hard it is to even find it? Um, hmm. There it is. Okay, so right here, there's one rhinestone missing. Just so you know. 
right there. It's a beautiful, must be gold plated because the color is just absolutely gorgeous, in great shape. The cable twisted wire look. There were several high designers that looked like this. The Yerman necklace makes one in 18 karat gold that's like thousands of dollars. So maybe this is a nod to the Yerman style. Certainly is gorgeous. Not sure how to measure these necklaces. Maybe you guys can tell me. But when I hold it up to the measuring tape, it's five and a half inches across this way. And of course, it's movable. And then the opening is two and a half inches here. So it's beautiful. I would say 45 if it didn't have that one tiny stone missing. But I'm going to say 25 on this one. Okay, so that's the beginning of our rich box, poor box episode and what happened with the research that I did. Put these away gently because I keep very, very good track of where everything is. And that's why those pieces of information that I ask you for are so important because that's how I find the pieces that you ask me for. Okay, here we go. I'm going to grab some pieces out of the rich box. I'll try to park it up here for a minute. And lean it over because I really like for you to actually see everything I'm doing. It's just much more fun. And you probably feel like you're here with me when I do it this way. From time to time, I do like to remind the new subscribers that... My videos are not particularly fast because I do not take the jewelry out ahead of time and look at it and research it. I take it out with you right here on video with me. So that's why they may seem a little slow to you at first until you get the hang of what my channel is about. I don't always do that, but for the most part, almost always. There we go. Take some out. Some things I'm very surprised to see right now, so let's see what's happening with this. A little bit heavy, I gotta put it down. There it goes. Okay, now to remind you all, we are comparing just two boxes of jewelry, one that I paid almost $500 for, which is this one from a site on Shop Goodwill that always has high-priced boxes. So I thought I would give it a try and just see what's in them. And then I bought another box for only $25. I've been really excited to let you all know. I went and looked at what I paid for that other box and it was $25. So that was really fun to learn or to remind myself of. Because these boxes have been around for since August, I think, or maybe earlier. And then I decided to do this series with them. So that's what's coming out of this box right now, Rich Box. Let's see what we're getting. Um, and my point about that is that this is not a really fair comparison, since this is the first time ordering from this location which they don't want us to say. And yeah, I think it would take a lot more videos, a lot more comparisons to really know which is better, an expensive box or a least expensive. But we're having a lot of fun opening two boxes at once, that much I know. Now last video, there was a necklace like this. It was a double hang necklace and it was painted with pink and purple. And wow, did I get a lot of requests for it. It had hearts on it, and it was artisan made. Now this doesn't have a clasp. I don't know if this is the same maker. It is very rough looking. It's gonna to have to go to craft. But just letting you know that that pink and purple necklace that was painted really was loved by a lot of people. So I'm gonna put this aside. No clasp, doesn't look too good. And then we'll do a craft bag uh, later, probably not this video. 
Okay, now it looks like a druzy type necklace. It's quite long. Not seeing any marks on it. It doesn't appear to be gold. And it does have some wear. So I'm not seeing a lot of redeemable, you know, reason to sell this one at all. Um, not even sure if I need to test that. I think I'm just going to put that to craft. Next is, wow, I hate to have three bombs in a row, but here we go. These I have not seen Shop Goodwill put in any of their jewelry boxes. They do promise to not put Mardi Gras beads in their boxes, and they've been really good about it. As far as I know, I haven't got any. But here we are in the rich box, and they appear to be Mardi Gras type beads. And look at this one, it's kind of crushed. So, wow, unless I'm missing something, I'm not seeing anything about this that would be how should I say? I can't say it's not special. Everything's special, but not uh, worthy of selling. So that's going to go to my craft, bulk craft pile. Oh, this is another thing I meant to mention on my last video, which was called Jewelry Jars, Craft Lots. I have one jar left. The special YouTuber subscriber jars that I made the all wearable jewelry and those big fat cups. I have one jar left. It's jar number one and it's $39. And it has some sterling silver in it and some gemstones just for my subscribers. And there's two, there's a wearable bag named Chance and a craft bag that's still available too. So just letting you know that. Um, here we have, it looks like the same type of Mardi Gras beads but then they've added something and they're talking about something being established in 1917. Now I wonder, would that be where the Mardi Gras is held? I don't know. That flower is pretty. I have no idea about this, but I'm going to put this aside as well. If you know anything about that, let me know. Nothing wrong with this piece, but same thing. Okay, let's hope we get some goodies here. This is beautiful. And I see some pink beads that are beautiful too. Wow. Okay, a little bit caught up. I have so much that I want to fill you in on, but I probably will have to wait till I have more time. Maybe when I do like an untangling video, I can tell you more about my cake decorating days and things like that. But today I just want to get a video out for you because it is, it's been several days and I do not want to lose my new subscribers. So this necklace is very beautiful. It does feel well made. I see one missing right here and I really think this is worth holding out for to uh, see if I can find that piece in the box because the chain is in great, great shape. And it looks like it has a tag on it. Um, Natasha, that's a very nice brand. Original price, $24.99. I do want to hold out for that missing stone. But in the meantime, if you love it and if you want to buy it and craft with it, I will say 15, or let's say 10. Let's say 10 on this, and then if no one picks it up for 10, or you all wanna wait with me for that stone, I think that'd be great. So we'll put that one aside. Oh, maybe I should measure it. It is pretty good long size. I'd say um, like a 22 inch necklace. Next is this very beautiful, oh, I love these kind of beads. They are crystal pink beads, and they have a touch of gold peach to them. And look at this. Look at that bale on there. That is gorgeous. 
The chain is nice and long, very long, and it's in good shape. I wouldn't say it's absolutely perfect shape, but it's not worn and not, not terrible at all. Very good condition on the chain, just lovely, beautiful, sparkly piece. The gem, the gemstones, the rhinestones on the top are a silver tone backing, and then there's a strip of gold, a couple strips of gold tone. Just beautiful, that's a pretty piece. There is no maker on it, but it does measure Oh, a good 32, 34 inches long. So a nice long necklace. And I'll say we'll do $12 on that piece. Next is what looks to be a vintage gold tone puffy necklace. These are really selling well now, these puffy type of vintage necklaces does have this hook clasp. It looks to be a choker style and it looks very well made. Very well made. It does look like it needs a little bit of polishing. And let me just get my polisher because I always like for you to know right up front if it's going to polish up nicely or not. So you have all the info you need. Every little tiny thing that you need to know about every piece. Nothing kept from you, so. It does polish up nicely. If you look at this side, compared to this side, you can see the difference. So I'm happy with that, I'm very happy. I don't see a maker, oh, maybe I do. I see a little something right there, see that? And I have no idea what it says. None whatsoever. Um, hmm. I'll try to get it in camera view and see what you think. If I get it in view of my, um, gosh, if I get it in view of my, what is this, a loop, then I bring it to the phone. It seems to work okay. But I've seen some people put the loop up to the foam like this and then bring the piece and it works out good for them. Oh, there it is. So I can't read that. Don't know if you can, but it may be signed in some form or another. It does polish up nicely and it's a beautiful piece. I think it has kind of a curve to it. So that's why it just kind of kinked on me a little because I flipped it over when it didn't want to be. It is 15, 16 inches long. Gorgeous vintage. And I'll say $15 on that one. Okay, next is, looks like maybe a crocheted piece, but it feels like metal. Okay, this is something I haven't seen before. It's very windy out today and I have the door open to get some more light in. So you might hear some gusts of wind. This piece, again, looks crocheted but is metal. I thought it was gonna be like a, a white lace, but it's not. It's silver tone, almost like a white silvery tone. It's on this chain, it's got an extender with the lobster clasp. And it's pretty. It's very dainty, it would be nice layered with something. Hmm. Okay, it measures 18 inches fully extended and I'm not sure about this. I haven't seen anything like it, but I'll say five on that piece. <clears throat> Always starts when I get on camera, then I have to, you know, clear my throat or something. This is another piece of horn necklace. I do like this one. This is a beautiful piece that they, the way they chose it right there. 
It almost looks like a gemstone. It is on a leather cord. Um, let's see. I'm not sure why it's tied again here. Maybe that's just a knot that we're supposed to get out. Probably. Yeah, that's probably another knot. And then it has this clasp with another piece of horn. I do like this. Once we get that knot out, that would be a nice little piece for sure. And I would say, let me measure it. It is 28 inches long and we'll do six on that one. Looks like another horn necklace. Maybe someone turned in their collection. It's just a beautiful thing to look at. It really is. I love the white parts and the, the darker parts. Very pretty. This is on a black cording. And I don't see a clasp. This is where they tied it, I believe. So we have this piece here. It is quite lovely. Not sure if you could double it. I think if you put a clasp on it, that would enable you to double it, and that would look really awesome as a doubled necklace. But as it is now, there's no clasp. And it measures 35 to 36 inches. Really gorgeous. And I'll say 18 on that piece. Next, I'm not seeing any designer pieces. Like, did they put the designer pieces on the top of the box? Because in episode one, there were like, wham, wham, wham. There were designer pieces right there. Not seeing that yet on this episode. So silver tone snake chain that comes down to a puffy heart. The puffy heart looks like it was added to this. It does not look like it's the same metal. It looks like it's sterling on a non-sterling chain. So let me see if it polishes up a bit. It really does nicely. But the quickest way we can tell is to take the magnet and it does not react to the magnet at all. So the puffy heart might be sterling. We could check that. It's on an older bale. And then I find that if something's sterling, people would rather have it on a sterling chain. But you can all let me know about that. If you love the puffy heart, would you rather I put it on a sterling chain or just sell it like it is? So it's going to need some polishing. And why don't we just take a minute to see if it's sterling so we know right now. Okay. Now when I test for anything, I always try to not bother the piece. I might try to go up here at the top of this Part if I can, that way it's not bothering any place that you're looking at. But the bale looks much older to me. And I will take a, I will throw my loop on the floor. No, I will take a look at the bale quick, see if there's any marks in it, which is kind of hard to see in there, but it's always good to look. and also on the heart, not seeing anything. So let's see if I can get a little sample on that part of it without bothering the heart. And I think I'm seeing a brass underneath. So it is silver over, silver plated over brass. It's just an older heart. So this can be polished, it is on a nice snake chain, pretty good size. And it's 24 inches. So I will say we'll do three dollars on this because it needs some polishing. Now what is this? This is black beaded necklace. It just popped off of this part. So I'll get that back on, but it keeps spinning around as I'm trying to pop it on there. So easily that can be put back on. We have these little tiny black beads. 
It is heavy. Not sure what they're made of. I'll have to ask Miss Prissy what she thinks. So we'll have to wake her up. Let's bring her over. Hi, Miss Prissy. How's my girl? This, for you that do not know, is the Presidium Gem Tester. It is such a game changer if you're going to be researching jewelry or buying, reselling. Even if you have a lot of jewelry yourself and you want to see what it's about, it's a game changer. It's a great machine. I do love it. You do have to know how to use it. You've got to take some time learning that. And you can never just say something is a certain stone without also remembering that only a gemologist can tell you exactly the value of any stone. Just saying. Just so you know. So these are testing. Oh, okay, there's a little tiny, tiny little pin at the end of the pen. And you have to get that on the bead. And the bead is round. So it often rolls off of it while you're trying. They're going to glass. So they're not, um, and I'll move her very carefully, going to glass. So they're not uh, a dark, a black stone like onyx. This can be hooked back together. It is a nice long piece. It is 36 inches long. Glass beads, looks older, quite long, and I'll say we'll do $6 on that one. And I will hook it, I'll hook it together. Okay, I'm liking this chain very much. I love these chains that are all textured like that. They remind me of older pieces, but seeing the lobster clasp tells me it's not terribly old, it could still be 80s. But look at the heart, this is a pretty one. Has some texture to it. I'm learning to look at jewelry and ask myself, does this look machine done or does it look hand done? And this does look hand done, meaning hand stamped, where they take a tool and actually hammer in the marks. In my opinion, it looks hand done because that helps me to determine if something is like artisan, southwestern. Not saying this piece is, but it's been helpful. Now, let's see how this one polishes up because it seems like a lot of things in this box need a little bath. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful heart. Cleaning up very well. A little bit of wear on that bale. Showing a little bit to silver. Nice long chain. Again, the chain is not perfect, but it's not worn at all where I would not want to sell it. So, super long, pretty, pretty darling. 36 inches. Probably the back could use a little clean. 36 inch gold heart necklace. Nice long chain, I'll say 10 on that one. Now we've got a chain with nothing? I think so. Silver chain, lobster clasp, and it is magnetic, so we don't have to check for sterling. I don't know, I guess I can hold on to it, see if there's something that fell off of it. It's not in terrible condition, but it's not awesome. Vintage chain. Oftentimes these are from Korea. I don't think this one is because the ones from Korea are just in, they're always in great shape and they have such a great finish on them. Not that this doesn't, this has a lovely finish and the older spring ring but I'm not seeing any marks and I just do admire the Korea pieces. So here you go, a gold chain, no pendant on it. It's 22 inches long. And I do have a heart pendant that was not on anything that we found in the first episode. 
that I could put on this chain. And I, this is a lot like that other pendant where the bail is the same size too. Where it polishes up nicely. And I bet you it would look nice on this. So let's marry them and have a necklace. I think that'd be nice. It's always great to have a little bit longer chain. Instead of an 18 inch, this is a 22 inch. So it would hang right about where you want it to for a nice big, beautiful heart like this that you want to show off. And there you go with the spring ring. And there's another heart necklace. So I will say, see that little bit of wear right on the front again to silver, but still very wearable. And I will say five on this piece. Okay, what else have we got? Wow, this is interesting. It's very heavy. It looks like solid brass, almost solid copper. And it does say something in there. Looks very old. It's marked D like David, K like Kevin, C like Sherry, <laughs> C like Calvin, and a copyright sign. Let's see if I can show you that. Anybody familiar with that? I can certainly look it up after the video. D K C or CO for company, DK company? Could be. Looks quite old. It is tied on a silky chain. Let's see if there's any more marks. It looks like it's supposed to be tied right here. So that's cool. The top of it is just tied, so you could tie it wherever you want to. I don't know, DK company. Maybe I'll stop right now and just take a minute. Okay, so here's what I found. And I hope someday to have two cell phones. That way I can just show you right here what I'm doing and what I'm researching. But I went to a few websites and researched DK Company and came up with the name Donna Karan or Karen Karan. One of them said DKNY, but I think that's wrong. Um, there are pieces that are called rare and collectible. There's a cross that's for $99. There's pieces that she's made with Robert Lee Morris for $389. Those seem to have more of a gold tone to them. So I guess it's a designer and this sign shape probably means something to those who would know. I'm still quite new to jewelry, so I don't know all that. It is signed. I do believe it's brass, it's good and heavy. And I think we measured it. If we didn't, it's 35 inches long designer. And I will say 45 on that. And we'll see what you all say about this piece. But that was fun to learn about that. And I'll keep my little note there. Now this piece, I didn't really grab at it earlier because it didn't appear to me to be sterling. Um, but you never know, you always want to check your metals. I always say that. Doesn't appear to me, I think I see some copper hues, but again, copper hues can mean sterling too. So let's try our magnet test. It does have a little bit of a pull. So we have a nice thick costume, very heavy chain with a lovely box clasp. Make sure that works good. Terrific, nice big piece. Silver plated, I would guess. And it measures 24, sorry. I have a measuring tape on my table. 12 and 12 is 24, yeah. So there you go on that piece. I'll say $6 on that one. And that's it. Then we have this little bracelet, self-adjustable. It looks to have hematite beads and maybe tiger's eye or wood. I feel like my light could be better. It's probably that it's getting darker out. My light is right over top of my the thing that holds my phone. 
Oh, they're really beautiful wooden beads. Just a beautiful color to them. So that's this bracelet, and I'll say $3 on that piece. So that's it for our beginning of Rich Box. Put that over there. And now we will take out some pieces for the pour box. And I put little, like, scent, you know, like a, not a dollar sign, but a scent sign on this little tag and the dollar sign on that. I thought that would be cute. Okay, here's the pour box. As you remember, there's, there's probably more pieces in this box than there is in the rich box. So we might have to do more, you know, more of these pieces than the other one. So there's no way I can hold this box with one hand and safely get these pieces out. Let me show you what's in there before I pull them out, because I really like for you to have the exact experience that I'm having, if I can. Oh boy, this is knocking over. So that's our box. I'm going to pull some pieces out, put them on the table, and I'm just going to need both hands to do it. Okay. Again, I don't want to pull anything and break it, so... Pause the camera and come right back. It'll be more fun when you see the stuff on the table. Okay, we got us a pile. A pile indeed. Look at all the colors. A lot of plastics, a lot of lightweight pieces. This looks very cool. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get the distraction out from the camera. If it has to focus on too many things, it's not happy. This looks awesome. I am thinking, I don't know, some kind of resin, maybe Bakelite or something. This looks really great. I'm going to test that. And I just watched Jason Adams' video about camouflage Bakelite that they're finding that they're a different kind of resin. Fascinating stuff that he talks about. I mean, it just never ends. His videos are fantastic. Just love them to pieces. This is a wooden bangle. Needs some cleanup. I'm just going to put that in craft. It is a very nice yellow color. Um, I could give it a quick wipe just in case someone loves that color. I kind of feel like I want to wipe my hands anyway. So let's just see. Yeah, it's not wiping up very well. So I'll probably put that in the craft. And then look at these pink beads. Aren't those adorable? It's not quite bubble gum. It's coming up on the camera more of a peach color with the typical gold spacer beads of that time. Just beautiful. I love it. I love it. It is acrylic. It's on a gold tone lobster clasp. It is an oldie though. Look at the little fuzzy ends there. But I think it's so beautiful. What a great color. So it is a pink. But let me see what I can hold next to it that can show you. This is probably not a good example. This is more of a purpley fuchsia pink, but see how it takes on a little bit of a peach color. It's so pretty. I like it. I love these older pieces. This is adorable. I'd love to make a set out of this. It's 18 inches. Let me make sure that little spot comes off. And it does. Yes. Just love this. 18 inches. And oops, I have to move that jewelry over. I'll put these pieces to my left side. I have got to say, I've got to say 18 on this. I think it's worth it all day. Gold tones in great shape and just a beautiful color. Really pretty. All right, now let's go to this one. This looks like a long piece. 
flapper style. I see an older spring ring clasp on it. A bit of a tangle going because I think we've got a couple of really long necklaces that they probably stacked together in the beginning when they had them in the store. Come on now, there, honey. There it goes. All right. Acrylic beaded. Pink's kind of a purple. Very long piece. Again, older spring ring clasp. And it has little pink spacer beads. That's cute, too. It's very long. 40 inches and another 14. So 58 inches long. 58 inch necklace. You'd have to really like that style. I do like the shape of the beads. And it looks almost like, it looks like old Hong Kong. Very great condition. If you love something like that, I'll say five on that one. So cute. I still can't get over this one. It's adorable. Okay, next is another very lightweight acrylic piece. Very interesting shape to the beads. Super light on this one. If you need jewelry that does not bother your neck, this would be the piece for you. It does look like Maybe there was a clasp or something there, and there isn't. Not sure what's going on there. It's kind of an orangey color that um, is marbled looking. And I don't know if someone would be interested in this, but it is 48 inches. And I will say $1 if you are already buying something else. I'll add this for $1 to your package, okay? But if not, then I will put it with craft because it would cost me more to send it to you than the $1. Okay, this feels like all seed beads and maybe some stones. I'm trying to figure out if it's how it hangs here. Oh, here's the clasp. Okay, got it. So this looks like an amber color glass. There's your button clasp, and it's about four, five strands of seed beads and pearly colors, yellow colors, orange, different pieces of glass, I believe. Let me see what this one looks like up close. That is a coral bead. I'm pretty sure that would be coral just by the texture of it and the way it looks. Let's see, do I still have her on? Yes. They're certainly glass. So you have a five or six strand necklace. And the beads are all different shapes. It's lovely with the little button clasp. So it would look like this on. These beads are a coppery, purple almost, color. Necklace measures 20 inches, and for this one, I'll say $5. Okay, now this is super light again, but I, I just can't get over how cute it is. I'm sorry, I just think it's adorable. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I guess the vintageness of it. It's so cute. It's just really cute. It's a long piece. I should probably put it in craft. I know. I think it's so cute. It's, um, let's see, 48 inches long. The color is so pretty. I'll say $3. If somebody doesn't pick it up for that, I'll put it in a craft later because the color is fantastic. Okay. Again, with these cute beads. Now these are a different shape. Like a little disc shape. And they're sort of stationed. They're not hand knotted, but they're stationed throughout the necklace. There's no clasp. A little bit heavier on the whatever composite material it is on these. 
Another interesting, very pretty red lifesaver color to it. And this one is 48 inches also. Cute. I'm going to say $3 again. If someone likes it, you'll let me know. What have we here? Oh, this is nice. We have a teal color. Feels like glass, but I'll let you know in a minute. And this feels like amber almost. But I think it has a maker, so let's see what that says. It says JNY Jones of New York. Oh, that's cool. I haven't seen the label that way before. So three strands, Jones of New York, teal, silver tone, and probably a faux amber. It's pretty. Oops. I was reaching for Buster so I can show you what it looks like without all that background. Oh, that's nice. So once you fiddle with it, I think the teal color probably hangs the longest. Let me get it right. Because you've got to know if I can. If not, I think you know what I'm talking about. I think what needs to happen is it has to flip through here and get fixed that way. So I hold them like this and I go down to the other end and then I try to figure out how to make this end even also. Did I do it? Let's see. I did. Yay. See, over time you learn these tricks because you have to. <laughs> That's a really nice maker mark class. So there you go. Amber looking teal, silver tone. Nice looking. It is about 19 inches long and I will say, <clears throat> so sorry, we'll do nine dollars on that piece. <clears throat> Look at the colors we have going on. That must be why I picked this box when I was looking at the pictures because the colors look so pretty. Oh wow. Okay, this is definitely mother of pearl and probably angel skin coral because it's that lighter color either way that does look like coral oh my this is so beautiful wow 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 it is a double hang piece look at how they have a piece of coral at the end Let's see if this is going to say, it does say 925. We know this is a nice necklace. Absolutely. There's the 925 right there. So sterling silver findings. This is gorgeous. Oh my, my, my. Look at the sweet little pieces of coral in between. Okay, I'm going to say who I'm thinking of. This is no pressure for you to buy. Dorothy, I bet you're going to love this piece. So many times I'll see something, I'll think of one of my subscribers, my friends, and I'll they'll email me for the piece and I'll say, I was thinking of you when I was making the video. It's absolutely stunning. Just that look of the coral with the mother of pearl. It's just the softest touch I've ever seen. I'm not seeing any damage on any of these shells. They are nice and substantial. They're kind of thicker in the middle than on the outside. Oh, I'm in love. It's 18 inches and then 20 inches on the second hanging piece. It's quite heavy and sterling. And I'm going to say 45 for this one. It is a stunner. You know, when they use sterling, it definitely means they're a little more serious. Let me take a minute just to, in the middle of the video to remind you how to purchase. Please email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com. 
and give me the video name, the episode number, the time stamps of when your pieces show, that's very important, a brief description, and the price, okay? Thanks, and thanks for putting up with my non-technical abilities. <laughs> okay, this piece is gold tone with some acrylic beads. It looks like very jewel toned. And there's a maker on it, and it is Premier Designs. Oh, they make the loveliest things. Look at that gold on there. Really excellent condition. Got purple and red. Got green and teal. Red and blue. Just a beautiful jewel toned necklace from Premier Designs. 36 inches long. And let's see how it looks on the Buster Boy, because you can double this. It's a pretty one. Wow, right? I like it. I love the purple and the red and the green and just how jewel tone it looks. Premier Design, sign piece, beautiful condition. I'll say $8 on that one. I don't know, guys. Even though this stuff is plasticky acrylic, I like it. But we still have a lot to go in the rich box. But we are right now on the poor box. I guess I should have that out. So here is a shell necklace. I'm not sure what to do with these. I usually put them in craft. Um, so I think I'll just do that again. It's in great condition. And if someone is already purchasing something and you want me to add this, just ask me to add it as a free item. But again, as long as you're already purchasing something, okay? That way we, we have an invoice and I'll be able to ship it. Just the, all those kind of reasons. <clears throat> this one is white acrylic, older spring ring, gold tone clasp. And it has these really cute uh, shapes to it. And they are almost like faceted, very, very cute with little tiny spacers in between. It needs a tiny bit of a bath, but it's a nice long necklace. You could layer this with other things. I mean, really long. This is, let's see, 28. Uh, all right, I have to measure it this way. That is 20 and then 40 and then 56 inches long on this piece. Needs a little cleaning, but it's a cutie. The clasp looks like it might be gold filled, but I'm not seeing any marks. I think it's just in good shape. So let's see what that looks like if it's wrapped around. That's cute. So another cute vintage piece, and I'll say three on that. Nice long necklace. This guy is, looks like it has a tassel going, does it? Yes, it does. Get some of these moved out of the way. <clears throat> this is an Erica Lyons, wow. So Erica Lyons is just a great company. They make beautiful pieces. They always sell well, they're very collectible. Here is the tag, the E-L. The gold tone is magnificent. Look at that extender. We've got a purple marbly bead there. Nice gold tone here, a fuchsia, and a light pink. Larger beads along the way. These might be some kind of stone. Then it comes down to this tassel, and look how long the tassel is. With all of those on the end. So cute. That is a great tassel. Well, let me check some of these because often she'll add gemstones. Yes, they are definitely gemstones. They're going up into the quartz, even a little bit higher. I would say they're definitely dyed quartz. Not definitely, I can't say definitely. I would say they are dyed quartz along here, these bigger pieces. So, come on over, Buster Boy. Let's show them what you look like. 
beautiful Erica Lyons piece. Let's see. Double it this way. I have to double it so I can show it to you, but probably look awesome that way anyway. Oh my, look at that. That's a pretty one. Okay, very collectible. Erica Lyons. Incredible tassel. Including some gemstones on it. It measures 32, 35 inches or so. And then you've got the tassel, which is another 8 inches. So just a beautiful designer piece. And I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to do 22 on that. I think it's worth that all day long. Now, as I'm looking down here, I'm looking at some other pieces that might look cool with it. Mm, maybe not. Um, maybe not. Let me try the red. No. How about this one? That's kind of cool with it. But there are just a lot of pieces in here. But here's your Erica Lyons. Great necklace. Super good shape. Okay, let's move along. Wow. This is quite something. Look at all those colors. Really fantastic crystals. Silver tone. And there is a maker on it. I always hook it down at the end of the extender because when that extender is hanging down, it wraps and it tangles everything. This is on a Rolo chain lobster clasp, and it has this flower as a maker's mark or something. Not sure who that is. I might have to do some research. It is magnetic, but these crystals are fantastic. You have a green, a silvery peach, a blue maybe, a green again. That purple is fabulous. Just wow. Here's the back of it. It's a great looking necklace. I'll just have to see if I can find out who that maker is. It's 20 inches long. Beautiful sparkle. Would be nice to know when pieces use Swarovski because that looks really Swarovski to me. So I went away for a minute and took a peek. I took um, a picture and tried to Google image. I could not find anything on this. That's kind of difficult to find the maker on. Um, but I found several that are called Sabika, and they go for quite a bit of money. This does not seem to have the same. Sabika has like a oval and it's signed this one is not but it's very much like it and then i saw quite a few that are called sabika like necklaces so this must be a well-known sabika must be a well-known maker i hope i'm saying that correctly and it does speak about swarovski crystals on some of these so i might be right about that either way it is beautiful the sparkle is incredible and that's all I can tell you is what I know and what I can find and what it looks like. And if you're in love with it, you will just be in love with it. The silver tone is in great shape. The clasp looks like it's brass with a little wear on the clasp. And if you know the maker by that little tag, please let me know because I would love to put that in my Facebook group so that we all know. And the Sabika-like necklaces we're selling you know, in the $50 range easily. And I think this is worth that too. It's 20 inches long, but for my subscribers, I will say 30 on this one, okay? So beautiful necklace. Not sure of the maker, but we did what we could do. This is, looks like a brass clasp. This might be an older one. I see some AB coating, almost like oil slick AB coating. I think that's going to take a little detangling. 
and I'm trying to make a quick video today. I don't think I'll get to a quick video, but I'm trying. I love these. I love these faux stone vintage necklaces. I just think they're so cute. So another adorable piece. All the um, gold, gold ball beads in between are in good condition. I wouldn't say excellent, but I would definitely say good. The shine is there. Oh, so cute. And it's 30 inches long. I'll say $3 again if you like that piece. This is really, really light. And look at that. That is cool. It is sort of carved into there. If there's a silver tone, maybe enamel paint, and then it's carved in after that or some way like that. On both sides, it's kind of stationed along the way. Again, very interesting, super lightweight. Good condition. I'll measure it and let you know it is 48 inches long. That's a cute little shimmery piece. And again, I'll say we'll do $3 on that piece. I have a whole pile of acrylic necklaces over there, but they're awfully cute. Now this one feels heavy. Feels like it's real something. And it is a double hang. Oh my gosh, look how pretty this is. Oh my gosh, look at the glass pieces. They are, they look like hand blown in that shape. Oh, this is so pretty. And the different shades on the pearls. This has got to say Japan or Hong Kong. It does, it says Japan. So this is a vintage Japan necklace. They're becoming so much more collectible every day. Look at that cute little. Wow. All right, these are glass pearls. Yes. So all glass and glass pearls. You've got light pink, dark pink, very frosty pearl, champagne. And you see how they go very frosty and then very uh, matte finish on those. I love when they alternate between that. Just gives it such a soft color. And then these beads are just crazy beautiful. Glass, probably blown glass. So let's see this on the buster. This is a really great vintage piece. It does need a little cleaning up here on this chain part. Yeah, but I'm not worried because if I take some vinegar, it's not going to bother the glass. If this was had pearl coatings on it, I wouldn't be able to put the vinegar near that, just so you know. So here it is in all of its beautiful mid-century glory. A beautiful old necklace that is not old at all. She still has lots of life. So beautiful. <clears throat> it is <clears throat> 16 to 18 inches long. Wow, all glass pearls and blown glass. And I'm going to say 30 on this. Again, they are really collectible, and this is no exception. It's a beauty. Let's see if I can get through a few more of these. I feel like I didn't do justice to the rich box. Like, I should go get some more pieces out of that just to end the video. But wow, look at this one. Another great vintage piece. Brass spring ring, little beads in between. This has oval shapes to it. It's a beautiful buttery yellow. And look at this. It does need a little clean right here. Get that done. And it is, it's just so cute again. I really like it. The whole piece needs some wiping. So I kind of don't want to show it until I really clean it. Maybe I'll bring it on the next video. So I'm going to put this in my clean pile, bring it up on the next time, because I want it to be nice and clean. And then we've got our tangled one, and we've got this one. Oh, wow. This looks like an old clasp. 
Hmm. They are acrylic. They're made to look like faceted jet glass beads, but they're very lightweight. But the clasp is interesting. Hmm. It is an oldie. Brass over copper. It's very wearable, but it is acrylic. But I know we all like the glass ones, so I think I'm going to put this to craft. There's nothing wrong with it. Or maybe I'll put it in a wearable bag and someone can decide that way. But it's terrific. Not a thing wrong with it. Just not glass and not very shiny. Lovely necklace. What a great job it did, huh? This, I could not tell you. Some kind of piece of chain. Do not know with a rope on it. I feel like we had something else with that rope. Just to make sure it's not sterling. Use the magnet and to the craft pile. Okay, what is this? This is cool. Now that feels like Bakelite. It's got a lobster clasp. Look at this marbly peach color. Brass beads in between. And look at that color. And then this, I believe, is maybe wood. And then look at the crystals in between. Very, very different. Very lovely. Oh, and there's a pearl piece. I just don't want to stop. Let's do this. Let's at least test these two for Bakelite. I'm not real educated on Bakelite pieces, so you may see me test things that you might say, that's not Bakelite, but I don't really know yet. I'm not that really up on it, but I'm trying to be. So I'm going to take some of the Simichrome polish that is said to be the best way to test. Just a little tiny bit on a Q-tip. And I'm going to go on the inside of the bracelet and we're going to see if the pink color of this paste turns like a tobacco yellow. And if it does, then good chance it's Bakelite and it's not. I'm wishing it would, but it's not. It's staying pink. So I'm not sure about this one. Probably not. I need a little something to wipe that off. Not that it's not gorgeous, because, you know, even if you thought it was Bakelite, it's whether we fall in love with it that really matters. But Bakelite does bring more money. So I'm going to put this aside and look into it more. And then I'm going to go to my other side of the Q-tip. And, oops, here it is. And just get a little bit more of this paste. You don't need much test these beads because they're just so heavy, heavy, heavy. They do not feel like your everyday acrylic piece. Very dense and very heavy. And it's not changing color. So no on that one as well, but it's fun to check. Now why these would be so dense and heavy, I don't know. But let's have a look again. Gold tone, rhinestone encrusted disco balls. Look at these crystals in between. There's no maker on this. It's really cool. I, I don't know what else to say except it's just cool beans. Lots of different coloring and funky stuff going on. It is 18 inches long. Fabuloso. And I will say $18 on that one. I think I better stop here, but I can't not show you this one. Look at this. Oh my gosh, look at the pink. Oh my. So see what I mean? The frosted and then the shiny texture that's used. I love that. Look at the clasp. Oh my. This is the most cunning baby. You are such a cunning baby. Let's see what it says on the back. Hong Kong, again, very collectible. You can see why. It's a very vintage, I don't know what year 
20s, 30s. Beautiful three-tier peach and white faux pearl necklace. So stunning. The clasp is in great shape. Wowzy. It's about 19 inches on the first, 21 on the second, and 23 on the third. Oh, this is really precious. I'm going to price this one up. I think it's very collectible and in wonderful shape. All of those colors. It's such a spring beauty. And I'm going to say 40 on this. It is lovely. Very, very lovely. Probably not fair that this was sticking in our face if someone liked it and I didn't talk about it. This is a faux pearl necklace. Gold tone chain. Very lightweight acrylic pearls. Nice, really gold tone here. This is a pretty piece. Even though these are very light, look at the chunkiness in the middle and the just the sparkle on that. Let me see if there's any crystals missing. I am not seeing any. Yeah, this is really pretty. Someone might be really loving this. So I've got to let you know about this one. That presents itself beautifully. Oh, it's gorgeous. What a pretty baby you are, huh? This measures 20 inches to 22 to 24. Oh, that's a pretty one. And for that, I'm going to say 15. Okay, I feel really unfair towards the rich box, so I am going to go grab a few more pieces out of that and be back. Okay, here we go. Now I have to switch my signs. We are now back on the rich box. Pulled a few pieces because I just felt like it wasn't even. Okay, it looks like we have one of those cha-cha type anklets. It's in a silver tone, and they always have these letters on them. I'm not sure what they represent. But this is in very, very good shape. I've seen them several times, and this one's very nice shape. Very, very good. Let's see. Um, I do want to measure it in case someone likes it. I know they open differently. Like a little hook type thing. I don't want to take too much time. I think you spin it around this way. You know what? I'm just going to measure it on the... See, I can't use this because this is for bracelets and it's going to go right off the end of it, I think. It might not. So we know it's, it's 9 inches. A little over 9 inches. And I have no idea what these go for. But it's silver tone, a little bit magnetic anklet. I'll say eight dollars on that. And this is in the rich box. Yep. Okay, then this looks like coral, but it's acrylic. It either had a clasp or that's how they tied it off. Again, pretty colors. I love it when they do this with the faux stone. Lightweight acrylic piece made to look like coral. It's 36 inches long, so it can be doubled. Pretty colors, and I will say it looks a lot like these colors. I'll say $3 on that piece. Um, this feels like real stone. Look at the glass there. That's pretty phenomenal. I've seen art glass pieces, wedding cake glass, with all this extra glass on them, and the aventurine, but I haven't seen them also wrapped with these coils. Wait a minute, this does look exactly like this. Okay, I thought this was cold and heavy, which it is, so it didn't match, but that's just because it has these extra pieces with it. So this looks like where they tied it, and when you make a bracelet, uh, if it was stretch, I would say, you would hide that in the bead, but this is not stretch. 
So let's check because sometimes these are not registering as, as any kind of stone. And we know that these are acrylic in between. Do we know if these are sterling? I have a little bit of a pull. I'm going to say they're not. I just don't know how you'd get that on. If it's a bracelet, yeah, you could slip it on, but, you know. So I think you'd have to fix the, <clears throat> put a clasp on it or something. But it is a matching set. These beads are fabulous. Don't know what else to say about it. I guess um, we'll just do another three on this piece. And if you want the set, you can buy both. How's that one? Oh, this is pretty. So the things in the rich box are always heavier and seem to have a lot more like glass and stones. And in the beginning, they had more brand names. But look at this one. That's so pretty. That is so 60s, the colors and everything. This is enamel. Very well done. No, it's not 60s because it has a lobster clasp. But very 60s looking with that color scheme. So a gold snake chain. Great condition on the chain. Great condition on that enamel. This is the back. I mean, look at that piece. Super nice. The colors. If you have something in those shades of green, that's going to be for you. Okay, it's going to be hard to measure this one, but I'm going to say it's 16 inches from here to here. Then you've got that curve, so probably 18 or 20. Very beautiful, great condition. I'll say 12 on that one. Now, this definitely feels like glass pearls. I've seen um, this done by... Oh, what's that name? Of course, I can't think of it when I need to. And I've learned to always check these now for sterling silver because these clasps can be sterling. I don't see a mark yet, but this is in the way. Let me take this off. So heavy glass pearls, really beautifully made. Let me just see. It is magnetic, so this clasp is not sterling, although we've had some that are. Really pretty pearl, silver, um, a greenish sort of bronze, brassy peach, gorgeous glass pearl necklace with this fancy, fancy clasp. I still can't think of the guy that makes these. It's like there's letters to his name. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be so mad at myself when I watch this video over again. It's 18 inches long, gorgeous glass pearl necklace. Probably designer, lost its tag. And I'll say 15 on this. It's in beautiful shape. If you've ever wanted those multicolor glass necklaces, that's a good one. This is acrylic stretch bracelet. So this is what I mean when they make the stretch bracelets, they'll take this little piece and they will just pop it inside the bead. They'll put a little dab of glue and they'll pop this little tail inside the bead and hide it. So it's not that it's breaking, it's just that that little piece needs hiding. So it has some more clear beads into some more opaque, or that's just how they go. Turquoise color, it is all acrylic, in great shape, and I'll say $3 on that one. This piece feels very cold, very lovely. Now here is where I sometimes wonder if they take off a clasp and tie it back together and then put it in the box for us. So we'll have to see. I'm not thinking it's turquoise because I'm seeing, I don't know, some blue and some different colors in there. Let's first test our metal with the magnet, see if it pulls at all. It does have a little pull, 
but they do look silver plated. It's a beautiful color. It's meant to look like turquoise, I believe, and a nice long piece. Look at the beads. That's a pretty one. It's going to have to be an over the head piece, but it is 26 inches and it's a heavy one. So let me see if it's how light at least. Miss Prissy, are you awake? Let me see, do I have my diamond ring on? Let me try this. Spiny oyster, that wouldn't help us, but any kind of gemstone, I'm just, yes, she is awake. So this is just a beautiful piece, very heavy. You'll look like you're wearing turquoise. And I will say 15 on that. And then what does this say? I usually check what these say before I show them. Oh, it says love. Now that's beautiful. All rhinestones. There's rhinestones all along the chain, at least in the beginning part. Nope, it keeps going. Okay, that is very blingy. Big Cuban link type chain. Rhinestones all up the whole chain on every link. Very, very sparkly on the word love. Oh, are they missing right there? Or are they just not supposed to be? All right, so they look like they're missing right here, but if you look close, there's no way there were rhinestones there. That's just their design. Maybe it was too thin to put them there because every other place, there would be room to put the rhinestones and all of a sudden they just don't right there. So don't think they're missing. Now, along all of these links, not seeing any missing yet either. This is really well made to not have any missing. Let's see along here. There is none missing again. There's one there. Okay, we found one. It's not even missing. It's just a little bit dark. That is so well made. Not often do you see that many rhinestones still on a piece. So there you go. Very chunky. Pretty, pretty necklace. So blingy. I'll measure it for you. That sure is a statement, isn't it? I'll show you the back. And it measures 18 plus another, gosh, four or five inches. So 18 to 20 something on this piece. And let's see what my price would be on this. I think it's well made. All the rhinestones are there. One darker one. Hmm. I guess I'll say 15 on this piece. So now what I'm going to do, you all know, I'll remind you one more time how to purchase. And then I'm going to work on my thumbnail so I can hurry up and load this video and hopefully get it out to you tonight. And I will line up probably the rich box on the right, I mean, on my, my left here, with the tab. And I've got the pour box stuff over here. We'll put that on this side with the little tag. And I'll make my thumbnail. Meantime, here is how you would purchase. Please email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com. And don't tune me out because you're going to need the information or I'll have to email you back and ask you for it. You can take a screenshot of this and then you'll have it. But I just need the video name with the episode number, the timestamps, a brief description, and the prices. It looks like a lot. It's really not. Once you like something, you pause that video. You've got everything right there. So it shouldn't be a problem, okay? So my goodness, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad I was able to make a video today. It was really a tight squeeze, but I would ask you to subscribe if you haven't. And can you click the like button on the way out if you like the video? I'd appreciate that. 
I'll be looking for you in the comments. I love to talk to you all there. Can't wait to say hi to everybody. I've really missed you. And we will see you next time at the Bobbles. Rich or poor box, we'll be at the Bobbles. Bye.